When you talk about NES games, or more so older games that are based off a show or cartoon, I feel like Tiny Toons Adventures is often talked about, and in a positive sense. If you haven't watched the review I posted nearly five years ago, which happened to be one of the first reviews I ever did, I'd say give it a look. You know, self-plug. But I feel like you never hear about its sequel, Tiny Toons Adventures 2 Trouble in Wacky Land, which is kind of shocking because it's actually a pretty good, but much more difficult game. The story of the game is simple. There's a new amusement park that sprung up. Hampton, Plucky, Babs, Furball, and Buzz are invited by some mysterious secret admirer to check it out, but upon doing so, they find out that all of the rides are extremely hazardous to her health. Each of them gets their own stages, and yes, that means there is only five levels. I'll go through each stage in a bit of detail, since each behaves differently, but before I do that, let me elaborate on the ticket structure. In order to access any of the rides, you need tickets, of which you start the game with ten. Each ride has a different ticket cost, with the most difficult ones requiring more. If you run out of tickets and cannot get more, it's a game over. Other than that, you have infinite chances. So how do you get more tickets? Well, that's where your score comes in. As you play each stage, you'll be able to defeat some enemies, but most of the stages also include collectibles that give you a thousand points. After each stage, whether you complete it or not, your score is totaled, and you can go to the ticket booth to use the score to buy some more tickets. I think it ranges at about one ticket per 3,000 points, but I could be wrong, as the exchange happens quickly, and I really don't feel like doing the math right now. So if you start running low on tickets and aren't confident in your abilities, you can easily replay one of the easier stages to accumulate more points to therefore purchase more tickets. Make sense? In addition, after clearing a stage, you will earn a golden ticket, which are used to enter the final stage with Buster. You need four of these, meaning you cleared Hamptons, Pluckies, Babs, and Furball stages. If you can't, you can also opt to pay up to 50 regular tickets, but unlike the golden ones which give you permanent access to the final level, those 50 tickets don't get you back in if you fail. So enough of that. Let's talk about the stages in order of difficulty. First is Pluckies, who is a bumper car ride. It costs a single ticket to enter, so this is the most accessible of the five levels, although I think the difficulty is somewhere in the middle of them. That's because, well, it's freaking bumper cars, and unless you're a master at the controls, you'll be flung all over. Depending on the angles you hit the walls, or bumpers, you might go in directions that you have no control of. There's three different areas that you have to complete, and all of them simply require you to push two enemies into a hole. Personally, I think the second area is the most difficult because it's not very open. There is a slight advantage in the form of a power-up that you can get somewhat randomly. When hitting bumpers, you might see a power icon float out of it. If you can manage to grab that, your enemies won't be able to push you too well, and you can easily guide your enemies into the hole. And that's about it. I can't suggest using this stage to accumulate points because there's no items you can collect for bonus ones. It's strictly bumping your enemies and hitting the bumpers. Next up would be Hampton's Train Ride, costing two tickets. This, in my opinion, is the easiest stage, and also the best for getting more points for tickets. This is the standard platforming stage, where the screen automatically scrolls and Hampton has to travel from train car to train car, dodging enemies and other obstacles. There's also a small handful of times where the train cars will come apart, forcing Hampton to quickly hop over to the one on the right. Hampton can defeat any enemy by pressing B to use a weird drop kick that makes him bound forward. You can also use this to gain a bit of extra length to your leaps. At the end of the stage, you have to fight Arnold, who is pretty simple for the most part. He is also one of only two bosses in the game. When defeating him, the stage is over, and the golden ticket is yours. Third would be the Long Flume, who Furball enters with three tickets. This one doesn't seem too difficult at first, but once you get to this lift near the end, it gets hard fast. But before you get there, you'll find that Furball has to leap over enemies, jump from log to log, and avoid falling into the water. There's a lot of memorization involved, so once you play this a few times, you'll be able to avoid all the barriers. But that lift is where things get challenging because Furball can't leap very far. You then get all these spike columns along with sweeties chasing after you. If you can manage to get past all of this, there's another leap you have to make, but good luck making it on your first attempt. I fell off this multiple times before I finally got lucky and managed to make the jump. And it's all because Furball doesn't have a lot of speed behind his jumps, so he can't get enough momentum to propel himself forward. Anyway, the only other thing I really need to mention about this level is that Furball can't move around on the log when it's on diagonal. This usually isn't too big of a deal, but if you do need to shift your position around, you can just jump to where you want to be. The final amusement ride before you reach Buster's level is Babs' Roller Coaster, which I would consider to be one of the hardest stages in the NES library of games. Okay, maybe that's an exaggeration, but I still think it's extremely challenging. It costs four tickets, and you'll probably be dying a lot. Babs is stuck on a small coaster, where she must rotate it, jump, 
and duck under anything that comes towards her. Most obstacles can be avoided by rotating the lift, but some of it requires precise timing. This is another stage that you will fail unless you memorize that entire level. Three hearts just doesn't seem to be enough. Plus, you need to be very weary about jumping over anything, because if there's any momentum behind her jump, she'll go flying off the screen, causing a failure. I really can't say much about this one, other than memorize it quickly. You probably won't complete this level until you do. So let's move on to the final stage, the fun house. Buster gets a chance to enter this, and this is the only stage that really resembles the prior game. Buster moves with the directional pad, jumps with A, and does a leaping kick with B. You need to be careful when using this kick in the air, because if you use it, you won't be able to change direction in midair. I've accidentally died a few times doing this, so just be careful. Anyway, it's a huge maze, with a small selection of enemies that may be taken care of. But the main obstacle here is the timer. If you can't figure out this maze, which includes areas that require you to hang upside down, you're going to run out of time, forcing you to start over. The enemies and other traps are fairly simple to evade, although the teeth can be a bit tricky. Near the end, you'll run into Amara, but it doesn't seem like she actually does any damage. Did Konami forget to program this? Oh well. The actual boss of the game is Montana Max. I know, big surprise. This battle is simple enough. Just kick back the bombs that he throws at you. I think after five strikes, the game ends. It's kind of disappointing to see how easy it is compared to the rest of the game. So yeah, only five levels. And if you're a master of the game, you can complete each one in about two minutes. So, about 10 to 15 minutes. Now that's a short freaking game. Granted, it took me about an hour with the constant retries, but yeah, this game has the potential to be completed in less than a half an hour. At least the graphics and the sound equal fun gameplay. Everything is just as crisp visually as the original game, if not better. The sound is also pretty great, with catchy tunes and Babs having a neat remix of the Tiny Toons theme song. I can't think of any songs that will grate on you, which is always a pleasant thing. Especially when there's only about five freaking levels. Overall, Tiny Toons 2 Adventures in Wacky Land is a really fun, yet criminally short game. Konami tried to make up for that with what I would consider at times to be blistering challenge level. But really, that's no excuse, especially considering the quality of the original game. Again, that's not bad in any way, shape, or form, but I still prefer the original game. But this one is still worth a playthrough for fans of the cartoon. Just don't expect any replayability. Final score? 8 out of 10. This is Reaper. Happy fragging.